Hi there, today I'm going to be talking about the 1959 election. Now by the time of the 1959 election, the Conservative Party had been in power for eight years and they, they sort of began that process in 1951 when Clement Attlee was defeated by Winston Churchill, although the Conservative Party in 1951 got fewer votes than the Labour Party, one of the quirks of first past the post that results in Labour losing that election in 1951. And the Conservative Party gained power at a, at a pretty good time because Britain at this point in time in the 1950s is going through a post-war economic boom. And this leads Harold Macmillan to sum up the mood of the country by saying that the British people have never had it so good. And this is picked up in the Conservative Party's election. Their slogan is, life is better with the Conservatives, don't let Labour wreck it. And this would become a familiar refrain across conservative election campaigns, really across the decades. There was echoes of it, for example, in 2015, where David Cameron said to the country, we're in the middle of fixing the wreck of that Labour left us in after the financial crisis. Don't let them wreck it. Well, this is an early version of that. Let's just hear this message from Harold Macmillan um, from a contemporary recording. Well, I think the theme of the programme is really given in the title, the next five years. In the last uh, five years or eight years of Conservative government, it's obvious, everybody really knows it, that we've made tremendous progress economically. The pound is sound, the economy is sound, and as a result, we've had full employment, stable prices, we've got a higher standard of living, motor cars, television sets, better pensions, better education, everything has been enormously improved. One really knows that. In the home front, therefore, we've got to go forward and do better still. However, things weren't perfect for the Conservative Party going into this election. After all, the Suez Crisis happens in 1956, which severely damages Anthony Eden's government, and he resigns in 1957, which is why Harold Macmillan is fighting this election in 1959. But as Bill Clinton said about elections... It's the economy, stupid. That was him explaining why he'd won in 1992. It tends to be the case that with general elections, if the economy is doing well, and it was doing really well in the 1950s, that the party that's presiding over that economic boom is going to do very well. And that would be the case here. So Hugh Gateskill, who was leading the Labour Party at this point, faced a bit of an uphill challenge going into this election. Um, Although the Labour Party did run quite a slick campaign. And we can see that here with a young Tony Benn fronting Labour's election advert. This is our television operations room. Throughout the campaign, the leaders of the Labour Party will be speaking directly from here. We've got a sort of permanent staff here. Christopher Mayhew is uh, looking after facts and figures. When there's any interviewing to be done, the questions will be put by Woodrow Wyatt, and I'm going to give some of the news of the campaign. Britain Belongs to You will be on the air in this form 12 times between now and polling day. On sound, and BBC and independent television. So in this election, I think it's quite straightforward to see why what happened happened. The Conservative Party are often regarded as the natural party of government, but in this case, they simply got lucky. They were winning really off the back of this post-war economic boom, and I would argue that any government in power at this point of time would have won a third election victory, preventing the pendulum from swinging in the normal way back to the Labour Party at this election. And of course, we know that the economic boom does not last and that at the next election, which happens in 1964, Harold Wilson wins power and the Labour Party would win two elections in a row in 1964 and 1966 before losing power in 1970, unexpectedly, to Edward Heath. Now, I think, Bob, you would might like to do a brief summing up the situation before we close down. Well, this certainly has been an impressive Conservative win. They become the first government in modern British history to win three full terms of office in succession. On the other hand, this is a probably a conservative country. When you come to look at the history of it, 
The Conservatives have been in office two-thirds of the time in the last hundred years, and only twice in this century has a party other than the Conservatives won a working majority in the House of Commons, only twice in the, in the 20th century. It's not, on the other hand, a landslide, not as far as seat strength, not as far as popular support is concerned in the country. Something like one to two people in every hundred have changed sides. And this has given, because of the operation of the so-called Cube Law, this very impressive parliamentary win. But one hopes it will not mislead the Conservatives into overlooking the fact that they still have 45-odd percent of the nation on the other side, and they themselves cannot rest upon the kind of majority they've got. Conservative governments with big majorities in the past have not always been good governments. A tendency to slothfulness, to laziness, and the rest has set in. One can see that in the government of 1900, the government of 1924, the government of 1935, if you like. And one hopes, therefore, that after the uh, celebration is over, the Conservatives will face the fact that they've got work to do, despite the rather comfortable parliamentary majority. Labour, of course, has another set of problems, tragic in their way. The party, after 59 years of trying, has won one working majority in the House. And this in a nation which is two-thirds working class and a party calling itself Labour, appealing to the working class. And, as others have said all evening, it's quite clear that the greatest rethinking of the party's position in history must now take place. Well, it seems some things never change. It often feels like Britain is a country where the Conservative Party are the so-called natural party of government, and we managed to get Labour government for brief interruptions of Tory rule, and pretty much in circumstances where the Labour Party have um, pared back their beliefs and moved their party to the centre ground so that really we don't end up getting much change when Labour were elected. The one exception to that really being the government in 1945, Attlee's government after World War II. And there we go. Well, anyway, that's all for me for now. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and do look at some of the other videos on my channel where I've looked at other general elections, quite a number of them. Anyway, for now, goodbye and best wishes. Now the result we're waiting for just won't come, so shall we just sort of... On the tape they did say it would only come at six. I don't think it's worth staying on for another two hours. I'm going to talk to my friend upstairs on the telephone. What about our last result? Yes, David Butler says that he doesn't think it's coming till six o'clock. I don't think we ought to wait that long. Right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we hope you sort of enjoyed bearing with us. We've not been entertaining, after all. We've only been informing and trying to keep things straight, which I hope we've done tolerably well. I would like just to say this. I did say in a, a brief one-minute piece in BBC television last night, if you want to see the fullest and the fastest results of this election, watch BBC television. And do you know, I was right. That I know. Well, now, let's go and have some sleep. We'll be back at half past six, and as I told you, thenceforth every half hour, and back in earnest at eight o'clock. So until then, with our best good wishes from all of us, good morning.